What's up everybody? Jeff, Jenna, and Migs with Polar Pro, and today we are excited to share with you our new filters for the GoPro Hero 8 Black. So we have both dive and ND filters for the Hero 8 Black, but today primarily we're just gonna focus on the neutral density filters and how and when to use them. So when we received this camera, we were trying to figure out the best way to attach filters because the front lens element doesn't come off like the Hero 5 through Hero 7. So after doing a little bit of prototyping, well, a lot of bit of prototyping, we figured the best way was to develop a base frame that quickly just attaches to the GoPro so you can remove it or install it whenever you need to. And then a magnetic top piece with the filter element on it that's just gonna slide right on. And the magnetic filter experience is much preferred because it's easy to install them, remove them if you need to clean them, or just take them off altogether. And we went through a few rounds of prototyping on this one to make sure the magnets have a large enough surface area to ensure a secure connection to the filter for high vibration or high wind velocity environments. So the shutter collection includes an ND8, ND16, and ND32 filter, which is gonna enable you to unlock cinematic shutter speeds in any lighting condition. Now you might be asking, what the hell are cinematic shutter speeds? Well, Migs, Jen, and I are gonna illustrate that here. So back in the day, someone figured out that when shutter speed was at double frame rate, it mimics motion on film the same way that our eyes perceive it in real life. And this is called the 180 degree rule of shutter. So if you just reduce shutter speed on the Hero 8 Black, the image is gonna be very overexposed and that's because of the fixed aperture on this camera. Now what you have to do is reduce the amount of ambient light by adding an ND filter to the camera for a balanced exposure. And we have another really in-depth, detailed video on the 180 degree rule of shutter linked below if you wanna check that out. So the next question you might have is, why are there three ND filters? And that's because you need three different strengths of ND filters for different frame rate to shutter speed combinations as well as different amounts of ambient light. So right now I'm shooting 30 frames per second right here, so my shutter speed's gonna be 1 60th. And in order to get a nice balanced exposure at 1 60th with this lighting condition, very bright, I'm gonna need an ND32 filter, which is the strongest strength we have. And if I was filming at 120 frames per second, my shutter speed would be at 1 240th. And in that scenario, in these lighting conditions, I would only need an ND8 filter to get a balanced exposure. So if you made it this far, you're probably realizing that maintaining these cinematic shutter speeds is actually a lot of work. And you're correct, it definitely requires a lot more effort for you know, something a lot of people might not consciously pick up on. But this is what's gonna separate content creators from just casual capture shooters. And another cool way to use ND filters is for photos. And I like to throw on an ND32 filter to lower shutter speed so it captures some blur motion. So the subject, whatever the camera's mounted to, will be sharp and in focus, and then everything else that's moving around it will have a much greater sense of motion. And when you're using the ND filters to slow down shutter speed on photos, just remember to lock ISO at 100 minimum and 100 maximum, because if you don't do that and you throw an ND filter on, it's just gonna increase ISO without decreasing shutter speed. So remember to lock your ISO at 100. That's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions on the ND filters, comment below. We'll get those answered for you and we'll see you on the next one.